The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Bell, and this is Real Agriculture. Standing here today with Mike Palmier of MNP Ag Intellect. He is a partner and agronomist with the company. We're going to be speaking about trash management in canola when you've been running cereals prior. So welcome Mike, it's great to see you. Absolutely, thanks for having me. Tell me a little bit about what you consider good trash management. Well, so I mean, it's uh, it's kind of a broad topic because it's not just you know trying to uh, get good canola establishment that spring. It's uh, preparing it the fall before to be able to to be able to seed into it properly. Uh, we're based out of West Central Saskatchewan, so we're always focused on trying to capture as much water and snow as we possibly can. So one of the things that we try to do is leave our cereal stubble as tall as we can when we're harvesting uh, the fall before. In uh, that way, we can catch as much snow and as much water as we possibly can. As well, if we can place that canola uh, precisely between those rows, uh, we should be able to have a little bit of shelter from some of the abiotic stresses that we get, uh, like uh, direct, you know, direct sunlight early on with seed seedlings, try to protect them from the wind, those types of things. And so, that would be the number one: is you know, try to maintain your stubble, try to have it as tall as possible, but still be able to seed into it. So then the second one is uh, setting your air drill up to be able to precisely place those canola seeds. Uh, so one thing that we're focused on uh, is doing precise inner row seeding as much as possible. You won't get a better seeding job uh, with canola than going right in between those rows. Uh, again, we can protect from those, those stresses, but as well, uh, we don't run into issues with kind of upturning uh, the previous year's stocks when we go row on row. Um, so that would be another one. And, and one I would say too is, you know, just manage those straws, check your choppers, uh, make sure that they're in good shape the fall before. Uh, if you're doing a harrow pass in the fall, I would say, you know, try not to be too aggressive with the harrow. I find uh, the farmers sometimes have a, a tendency where they really want to turn dirt. Uh, and so they get really aggressive with the harrow. And where do they lose their, their stubble? They lose their stubble on the hilltops, which is actually where we want them the most. And so try to be gentle with that, understand what the purpose of the harrow pass is, is to spread out your straw evenly, try to chop it up a little bit. It's not to actually turn soil. Uh, and those would be the, the things that I would do to set up uh, a crop for success. So at what point would you say that that harrowing is too aggressive? Uh, I would say, honestly, if you're, if you're actively turning soil and you can see that you are disrupting the stubble and the stubble height and knocking it down, uh, then I would try to, um, try, to, try to lessen up the pressure on that harrow. Yeah. Right. And then how difficult is it to seed directly between the rows? It can be very difficult. It really depends on the topography of your land. The field that we're on here is, uh, is uh, you know, fairly flat, slightly undulating, I guess you would say. Uh, and so on a field like this, it would be maybe a little bit less difficult, but if you had a lot of topography, it can be a challenge, uh, especially with, uh, you know, some of the large uh, drill carts and, and liquid caddies that go behind there's a lot of weight kind of pulling so I know a, a few people have had a lot of success um, you know with you know an SFRTK type system and even putting uh, another uh, GPS globe onto the toolbar to help to guide the tractor and that seems to have really kind of narrowed in some of that skewing that you'll see with the drill uh, so it's a it's an investment mm -hmm. I would say uh, and the key with with your GPS signal is to 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 get a good one because what you want is to be able to have that repeatability year over year so that next year you can just shift your line and off you go. A little bit, right, that makes sense. And what is the economical return or do you know on, you know, making sure that you get that right? <laughs> yeah, I would say it's not always cut and dried, right? It really depends. There's a lot of different factors that, that go into, say, the agronomy within that. But let's say if we can move our seedling mortality on canola from what would be a typical standard of 30, 35% down to 20%, mm -hmm. uh, because we're not having issues with straw or pulling up those stalks. Uh, so now we've got 10% more plants, which we don't necessarily want 10% more plants. We have a, a plant stand target for a reason. So now we can lower our rates by 10%. And right. in many cases, you know, that you'll be seeing a seven or $8 an acre return on that alone. 
as well as you're going to have a much more consistent stand and establishment and mature, maturity all through the year. Right, that makes sense. And when harvesting the cereal, you know, you want to leave that stubble high. Is there kind of a breaking point where that doesn't make sense anymore? Yeah, it, it really depends on, you, you've got to be aware of what your, uh, your drill and opener style uh, can get through for straw. Uh, you've got to understand, I guess, you know, can you do a precise job of seeding within that? Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, there, you know, as you get taller stubble, the value of that will kind of flatline over time. It really depends on, you know, what's your average snowfall? Uh, you know, the, the benefit of a 20, you know, a 15 inch stubble versus a 36 inch stubble will be different because you're likely not going to fill a 36 inch stubble with snow. Right. Um, so, you know, the value that we have put on that in some of the work that we've done is that for every inch of snow that we're able to capture, any, every additional inch of snow that we're able to capture, we equate that to 1.1 bushels of canola. Okay. And so even if you think, okay, well, I can give myself two more inches. So it's not a lot. And just think about that a little bit. It's 2.2 bushels, which in today's market is 30, $31 an acre. So it can, it can add up and that's all on the bottom line. There's no mm -hmm. additional costs. Yeah, there's not much, there's no extra expenses that go into that. Yeah, so. yeah. That's great. And any words of encouragement for producers as they're getting out seeding? <laughs> Right now, the soil conditions are good. Uh, I hope we get some rain in our area here soon, because right now we're, we're in excellent shape, uh, but I'm concerned about it drying out. So the main thing is be timely. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully you've got a great plan going into the season. Uh, have a target plant stand, a proper target plant stand, uh, to be able to manage your costs, as well as uh, your, your crop potential. And uh, also, try not to work yourself too hard. And... Uh, um, try to you know relieve a little bit of stress where you can that's great well thank you so much and that was mike palmier on canola school <laughs>